Hey everyone, this is going to be my first video and I'm going to be teaching you how to use standard deviations and how to frame extreme reversals using those. Let's begin on the 4 hour time frame. I had the bullish bias going into the day wanting to see Friday highs to get swept. So as we can see here, the 2 p.m. candle from yesterday or the Tuesday was the CRT candle because it was a big bulky candle and I was expecting some form of manipulation regarding this candle. Okay, so this is basically all we have to do on the 4 hour time frame. So let's do our time frame alignment and go to the 15 minute time frame. So as we can see here, we still have those ranges marked out, the low and the high, the low and the high. And what we do to project our standard deviations, um, we're going to look for the last move or the last leg prior to the expansion. So I start trading at market open. So as we can see here, prior to market open, we had this huge expansion move. And this right here, is this, was the last leg prior to the expansion. So what we do, let me remove this, we use our FIP. In this case, we have a bearish manipulation. So we put it on the high, anchor it there, and the first swing low. Now that we have those deviations marked out, we can see that on the NASDAQ, the minus four lines up with the H4 CRT low, giving us a potential um, point of interest and we can frame extreme reversals from here. All we have to do is wait for the market open to tap this level and look for our entry model. Let's now move to the one minute time frame because that's where we should frame our entry model because now we are on the 50 minute and time frame alignment tells us to use the one minute time frame. As we can see, market opens around here and just consolidates. Meanwhile, ES already hit its minus two deviation, but we have to wait for NASDAQ to hit our key level before we can frame any longs. As soon as 9.45 comes around, we can see NASDAQ taps the key level and the minus four at 9.45, a special macro designed for extreme reversals. Also, we can see ES forms bullish SMT with the NASDAQ. Depending on what entry model you have, you could enter, for example, after this bullish candle or bullish farewell gap forms, just enter in longs and target our draw on liquidity or the origin of our market maker buy model because the minus four is the terminus of price and often the start of a market maker buy model. Meaning this down here is the smart money reversal. On the S we also have this, but since it only hit the minus two, NASDAQ is going to be the better pair to trade because it's going to have a strength switch somewhere in here to catch up to ES. Strength switching is another topic that I'm going to be talking about in a different video, but all you have to know right now is how to draw out these deviations and look for potential liquidity pools to line up with those to give you another kind of confirmation to frame your reversal models. Obviously, there's another way to draw out deviations because not only can you use it as the last leg that formed prior to an expansion, you can also use deviations on manipulation legs, meaning legs that formed SMT. As we can see here, NASDAQ took this low prior to 8.30. This was a new scandal, meaning this is the last leg 
that took out the low and manipulated it. On ES, it's a different topic here. On MES, I can guarantee you it didn't take this low, but equal lows are pretty much the same. So what you do is, like as before, you take a fib. This in this case is a bullish deviation. So you take it from the low to the high. Mark it out, as we can see. On NASDAQ, it hit the minus 2 to minus 2.5. On ES, it hit the minus 4. Ten layers, NASDAQ, as of now, is the weaker pair, but ES probably is going to strength switch later on and expand faster. Let's summarize this pretty quick. So, we have two types of deviations of usages. The first type is just the easy one. Just take the last leg before the expansion, put a FIP on it, mark out and look for a potential key level to be around the same level to frame your reversal and just enter on your basic entry model. The second type is basically taking the SMT legs, manipulation legs, putting deviations on there and anticipate strength switches. Meaning, look at here, we have this bullish SMT with this, let's say this is NQ, this is ES, NQ soups this low, ES does not, you take your FIP on it, see, okay, NQ trades into the minus 2, ES does so and trades in the minus 4. Afterwards, at market open, you can see this happening. Now, before NQ was the weaker pair, now it's the stronger pair, meaning it soups this again. Meaning, now, before it was the stronger pair, now it is the weaker pair. You can put another FIP on the manipulation leg and look for potential targets. Since ES is the weaker pair, you will target the minus 4, look for, obviously, another key level to be around here. And on ES uh, and Q, you can take your FIP and target the minus 2 and look for another key level. In this case, it is odd low. This is basically all you have to know about standard deviations. Obviously, you have to test it and get quite comfortable using those. But in the next video, I'm going to be talking about strength switching, as talked about in this video shortly, and also reversal macros and the distribution of highs and lows. So thank you for listening in, and I hope to see you in my next video, and you now have a basic understanding on how to use standard deviations.